Take a look at this Lego structure. Note that it's a solid base down here and then a singular support piece before finally on top we have this flat, singular roof-like piece. It's almost like a one-legged table up at the top. And now I'm gonna take this little Lego figure and put him dangerously just underneath the overhang that is not supported. Now how would you change this structure, assuming it was real, so that I could put a heavy masonry brick on top of this corner without this structure collapsing onto the figure? Danger, danger! If you do it successfully, you'll earn $1. Okay, rich. But every extra piece you use costs you 10 cents. Now many suggest putting support blocks here or here and I'll tell you why that's really interesting in just a minute but first I want you to take a look at this puzzle. Your goal is to make it completely symmetrical both horizontally and vertically by switching any of the squares while making as few changes as possible as fast as you can. Let me show you a couple more and I want you to think of your decision as fast as possible. What would you do to make these symmetrical? Okay, one final question. What would you do personally to improve or make this mini golf course better without spending a ton of money? What's really interesting about all these puzzles is that when you ask people to do them, the majority tend to add to the puzzles in order to solve them. In the Lego example, people are most likely to add a block here or here for extra support. Around 59% of people choose to add something. And in the block puzzle, people tend to add green squares instead of taking them away. On the mini golf course, 79% of people choose to add to it as opposed to taking something away. But the truth is, in a lot of these cases, subtraction is just as valid of a solution, if not more efficient. With our Lego model by simply removing this single piece here, ah! the entire structure becomes supported at no additional cost. And by taking away green blocks, you can reach symmetry just as easily. This is actually a known phenomenon in humans. We tend to find additive solutions to problems even when subtractive solutions are more advantageous. Now of course, the title of this video, depending on which one I chose, may have tipped you off and impacted your decision. Regardless, studies have shown this pattern exists in the majority of humans. And it's not just math problems. Have you ever tried to declutter your home? You know we all have this drawer where everything goes that you don't know where it goes, no judgment. Most people jump to buying more things to help organize and manage the mess, instead of simply paring down or getting rid of things you don't need or use anymore. When university presidents ask for suggestions that would allow the university to better serve its students and community, only 11% of responses involved removing an existing regulation, practice, or program. And this kind of problem solving is often the cause of extra red tape and unnecessary positions being added to institutions, new rules being added instead of taken away, or in the case of your own work, more words being added to your essays instead of editing it down. People create New Year's to-do resolutions instead of to-don't resolutions, and even watch more YouTube educational videos instead of further distilling what they already know. But I'm not complaining about that last one. Like, please keep watching our videos. <laughs> you can distill your knowledge at another time, okay? <laughs> the most interesting part of these studies was that they realized it's not that we think subtractive solutions are not as valuable, but there's actually a bias in the human mind where we simply don't think of them as often. In those exact same studies, when researchers more specifically prompt people that they can add or subtract pieces, the percentage of subtractive solutions increases, meaning humans have a natural bias to ask, what can I add here? This is known as a heuristic, a mental shortcut that allows people to solve problems and make judgments quickly and efficiently instead of having to mentally process every situation fully. But that doesn't mean it's always right or the best solution, it's just a quick one. And this mental shortcut can actually be overcome with some extra cognitive effort. So why are we like this? One theory suggests that subtractive solutions may just be less appreciated. You might get less credit for them, you might feel less creative, and you may face social or political implications if all you're doing is rolling back somebody else's decisions. That's kind of like criticizing a solution without making your own. Not to mention the brain may assume the other pieces or things are there for a reason. Say you're coding. I I literally don't understand coding, so please bear with my fantasy version. You don't want to delete some segment of code that you inherited not knowing what ungodly errors might pop up, so working in an additive form may feel less risky. Finally, there's something called the sunk cost bias, where you're more likely to continue something you've invested money or time into regardless of signs that you should stop. What's even more interesting is that in these studies, the number of people using additive solutions increased when they were under cognitive load. So if they were doing the block puzzle and they were told 
example that they had to turn their head clockwise the entire time they were doing it, more people would use additive solutions. Why am I randomly outside, you may ask? It's because I thought adding more dynamic to the video would make it better. Yes, I'm a hypocrite. This entire bias has changed my mindset so much and I cannot stop thinking about it. The amount of time I have spent adding extra meetings, extra emails, putting more in a script instead of refining it, and even in my personal life, just adding things all the time in order to solve things is wild. And I definitely suggest you think of your own life. It may even be why culture has come up with popular phrases like less is more or people like Marie Kondo became so famous. We need these little reminders to combat our natural instincts to add things. And I mean, why spend more money and affect your financial situation when you could just be reminded to pause and evaluate whether a subtractive solution might be equally or better suited to your problem. It also rings true for human consumption in general. We all know we have a sort of addiction to consumption. We're taught having more money, more stuff, more status is good, that the economy or corporations should grow indefinitely, even at the cost of people and the environment. We're facing unprecedented climate effects from this consumption pattern already. And while a lot of the additive solutions are super exciting and necessary like solar and wind, there's a much bigger conversation around simply using less. All this to say that next time you're faced with a problem, just take a second and pause and remember that less is more. Or it's at least worth considering as a solution. We actually chatted to one of the lead researchers studying this phenomenon over on our podcast channel on screen or link in the description, where we go over even more strategies on the science of less from his book, Subtract, and how it can help your life. Now, if you need some help subtracting the excess from your life and you wanna focus on the important things, then today's sponsor, Skillshare, is perfect for you. And they're offering the first 1,000 people who click the link in our description a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. They actually have an awesome class right now called Productivity for Creative creatives, build a system that brings out your best by Thomas Frank, which will guide you through how to optimize your working styles through mindset, environment, and delegation. I've also taken a ton of other courses from animation to Photoshop to nature photography, and now even TikTok courses. I'm getting old, I need help on TikTok. But honestly, there are just so many different options. It's really an online community where you can learn something brand new from the comfort of your own home. And they're dedicated to the best user experience, so there's no ads, and they're constantly launching new premium classes. For the first thousand of you that click the link in our description, you will get a free trial of premium membership. Every time you check out our sponsor or try them out, it helps our show, so we appreciate it a lot. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and we will see you next time for some more science. Peace.